LDL cholesterol, what's optimal for health? So in this paper from 2004, they proposed that the optimal low density, uh, l optimal concentration for low density lipoprotein or LDL is 50 to 70 milligrams per deciliter. So is this true? Well, uh, LDL increases during aging uh, with values uh, between 100 to 130, not 50 to 70 milligrams per deciliter found in youth. So that data is here with data for uh, men on the left and women on the right. So uh, in, in terms of uh, what LDL levels look like in youth, we can see that for men 15 to 34 years old, the average LDL uh, was 120 milligrams per deciliter, not 50 to 70. So what about for women? So when looking at the data for women for 15 to 34 years old, the average LDL is 108 milligrams per deciliter. So when just looking at the aging data, this idea that the optimal low density lipoprotein uh, range of 50 to 70 is inaccurate. What about all-cause mortality risk? So risk of death for all causes. So uh, first, in looking at the Kangbuk Sam Samsung health, uh, health study, uh, this was a study that included uh, more than 347,000 uh, non-statin users, so people who are not on lipid-lowering or LDL-lowering uh, medication. And also, subjects that had a history of cardiovascular disease, CVD, or diabetes were excluded from this analysis. And that's important because if uh, subjects were ill or had a disease, that could potentially um, um, adversely affect their LDL or other variables, and that would you know, uh, skew any subjects that had similar LDL variables that they would also look, you know, they'd be, all, they'd be grouped together because low LDL, relatively healthy, low LDL, potentially sick. So to account for that, the authors of this study excluded the subjects that had uh, CBD or diabetes. Uh, when looking at the data. So this is a, a study that had 199,000 subjects uh, or 199,000 men uh, and again on the y-axis we're looking at all-cause mortality risk plotted against the LDL concentration on the x-axis. So uh, what we can see is that uh, lowest all-cause mortality risk was found for uh, LDL uh, between 100 to 129 milligrams per deciliter. So what about higher risk? So to find that we put the uh, hazard ratio bar uh, right at 1 and then uh, places on, on the chart where we see the dashed lines, which is the 95% confidence interval, which are either completely ab above or completely below the red line, would be indicative of higher or lower risk. So in this case, we, we can see that higher risk, significantly higher risk compared to the 100 to 129 LDL at the lowest point. Uh, uh, well, I should say highest risk first was a very close to highest risk was for LDL greater than 160, but that is right on the border. What's clear is the low, uh, the higher risk for having a lower LDL. And in this case, LDL less than 70 milligrams per deciliter is associated with a significantly uh, increased all-cause mortality risk in men. So what about in women? So interestingly, LDL was not associated with all-cause mortality risk in the 148,000 uh, women in this study. So um, when compared with the uh, lowest risk, which was again one, 100 to 129, although there, there, were, you know, there seems to be a point uh, in, the, in the curve where LDL less than 70 looks like it's uh, at increased risk, um, and that's significant when adjusted for age, but when the uh, authors of this study adjusted, uh, f you know, in their fully adjusted uh, um, um, models, uh, LDL was no longer significantly associated with all-cause mortality risk in women. So having low LDL, less than 70 uh, in 40-year-olds uh, in this study, in the 40-year-olds of this study, uh, is associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. What about older than 40 years old? So uh, that data we have here, and this is the Korean Genome Epi and Epidemiology Study with subjects that had an average age of 53 years. And uh, what we can see first is when looking at the data for men, and again, they in this study, they uh, didn't include data for people that were taking uh, LDL lowering or lipid lowering medications. So they excluded people who were taking statins from their analysis. So this is 63,000 uh, men that were not taking statins. So when compared to the reference of uh, an LDL range of 100 to 129 milligrams per deciliter, uh, men that had lower levels, uh, first uh, less than uh, uh, 70 to 99 and less than 70, uh, had a significantly increased all-cause mortality risk, so rel relatively similar data to the uh, slide I showed uh, previously. So uh, when looking at Model 3, which is the fully adjusted uh, model, um, first when looking at LDL of 70 to 99, we can see that compared with 100 to 129 for LDL, 
uh, those subjects had a 37% higher risk for all-cause mortality. And then for, this, for the uh, group of men that had LDL even lower, less than 70, they had an 83% increased all-cause mortality risk when compared with the 100 to 129 group. So lower LDL in this study, um, in, in an older, a little bit older group, again, not good for health. So what about higher than uh, 129 in men? Uh, and in that case, uh, that data was not significantly different than uh, uh, when compared with the reference group, 100 to 129. So from that, you can uh, conclude that having higher LDL uh, may not be associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk in the 53-year-old men uh, in this study. So what about in women? Uh, and again, these were not uh, statin users. They were excluded from the analysis for also for the women. So uh, large study, almost 120,000 women in the study. And again, com when compared with uh, 100 to 129, were lower or higher levels of LDL associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk for women. And interestingly, similar to the data on the last slide, LDL at this age, at these levels, were, were not, was not associated with all-cause mortality risk. So what about older than 53 years old with an average population age of 53? So uh, I'm going to show data from uh, the Copenhagen General Population Study, and this included 58-year-old, on average, uh, men and women. So uh, again, this is data uh, for subjects that were not taking uh, uh, statins. So no, they weren't taking any, they, didn't, they weren't prescribed or taking any uh, lipid-lowering medications. So this is a study that included data, included data for 40, about 42,000 men, and we're looking at all-cause mortality on the y-axis, uh, plotted against L LDL cholesterol on the x, and then also on the right side of the, the y-axis, it's got the uh, population density, which is the thin blue line, which is basically the, you know, the, the population-based average for the distribution of LDL, and we can see that the average LDL is somewhere around 130. Now, when looking at the all-cause mortality risk data, we can see that lowest risk for all-cause mortality for this uh, age group uh, is at around 140 milligrams per deciliter, not 50 to 70. Uh, so higher, again, may be better. So um, what about increased risk? So uh, in this case, we can see that there's an increased all-cause mortality risk for having LDL values less than 131, but then also greater than 189. So there's a sweet spot for LDL for this age group. So what about in women? So unlike the earlier data in 40 uh, and 53-year-old women where LDL was not associated with an all-cause mortality risk, now we start to see that there is a significant association. Uh, so when compared with lowest risk, 143, uh, an LDL of 143 was uh, associated with lowest all-cause mortality risk, uh, we see an increased risk uh, for lower levels, uh, less than 92, but also uh, greater than 189. So again, there's a sweet spot for the LDL uh, for potentially for an optimal range for minimizing uh, all-cause mortality risk. So uh, can the increased all-cause mortality risk for low LDL be explained by reverse causation? So just to, to briefly introduce that again, so if, if you have an illness and that illness then negatively impacts your circulating biomarkers uh, and then you're, you know, you also have a group of people who do not have, you know, uh, uh, over illness and uh, so they're going to be grouped together. So to, to account for reverse causation, you can uh, do a few things to try to, uh, uh, to, to try to identify, you know, is it, the sick, or is it the sick and disease that are driving the data or is this an effect that's found in the general population that's free of disease? So in, in the study that I just showed, they tried to account for reverse causation negatively impacting the data uh, by... Uh, removing subjects that didn't have data for within a five-year follow-up. And what that means is basically that uh, that would be the, if, if they didn't have a five-year follow-up data or up to five years of follow-up, it's possible that the majority of those subjects died. Um, and that's why they didn't have additional follow-up data. So by excluding the uh, subjects that didn't have five-year follow-up data, you're potentially accounting for uh, reverse causation because you're eliminating that data uh, uh, from the start. Now, inherent in the uh, potential for people to die within that five-year follow-up are dying from individual diseases. So they also uh, excluded data for people that um, were diagnosed with uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Um, for uh, They excluded people that had cancer, and then they excluded people that had chronic uh, obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, and then looked at the data in, associ in association with all-cause mortality risk for each, uh, for you know, as LDL increased. Um, okay, so what did they find? So first, when looking at uh, the, the first uh, chart uh, to the left, uh, so they removed people that didn't have five-year follow-up data. When compared with lo uh, the lowest risk for uh, all-cause mortality, which again was at 143 milligrams per deciliter for LDL, once again, we see low LDL 
is associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. Uh, so what about uh, after removing uh, people that were diagnosed with atherosclerosis uh, at baseline? So uh, in this case, then again, lowest all-cause uh, mortality risk is for an LDL of 140 with increasing risk uh, uh, for low levels of LDL and also high levels of LDL as shown by the arrows. What about excluding people diagnosed with cancer at the baseline study visit? Well, in this case, again, LD, an optimal uh, LDL was around 143, lowest all-cause mortality risk, and then a higher all-cause mortality risk was for values lower than 143. And then, uh, uh, again, uh, excluding uh, for, uh, COPD patients that were diagnosed with COPD at the baseline visit, uh, again, having too low or too high above that 132 optimal LDL value was associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So this is data in uh, up to 58 years old. Can we go older? What's the association for LDL with all-cause mortality risk in adults older than 58? So uh, I'm going to show two studies, first in 74-year-olds and then in 94-year-olds. So first, we're looking at data for about 70,000 uh, subjects with an average age of 74 years. And uh, all-cause mortality is plotted on the y-axis against uh, LDL cholesterol on the x. And what we can see is decreasing all-cause mortality risk as the LDL is uh, you know, all the way up to values of LDL greater than one, you know, around 141. So we can see that there. When, so when compared with the lower LDL, in this case, less than 100, subjects that had, or 74-year-olds that had greater than 140 or 141 had a lower all-cause mortality risk. So once again, this is data showing that having, uh, you know, higher LDL but not super high is better than having lower LDL. What about 94-year-olds? So this is data from uh, 935 uh, uh, subjects that had an average age of 94 years, and obviously the sample size is going to get much smaller as we get to uh, subjects that are you know older than older than 90. Um, so what we can see here, and this is a survival uh, survival curve, we can see that the black line were was is the survival curve for people who had an LDL greater than 130, and the dashed line or the uh, you know the, the the jagged line is had was people who had an L LDL less than 130. So uh, this is you know up to three and a half years of survival when con compared. Uh, sorry, this is a three and a half year survival after measuring LDL levels at the baseline visit. So they were either higher than 130 or lower than 130, and what we can see is that. Uh, that there was a better survival for the 94-year-olds that had higher levels of LDL, higher than 130, when compared with the uh, survival of the people who had, uh, or the 94-year-olds that had an LDL less than 130. So uh, how high can we go here? What are the LDL levels in even older subjects and centenarians? Is it 50 to 70 or is it higher, like I've shown for all of the data through the various age groups? So this is data in 1,002 centenarians, so uh, older than 100 years old, and Accordingly, the average age of this cohort was 102 years old, and their average LDL value uh, that, that's in millimoles per liter here, but also I put the data for milligrams per deciliter, average LDL 107, not 50 to 70, as propo proposed in that paper from 2004, and that I've seen in many circles online, uh, you know, postulating that this is the optimal uh, LDL for health and, and uh, longevity and minimizing disease risk. So, so what is optimal for LDL then? Well, if you're healthy, and what I mean by that is disease-free, you haven't been diagnosed with a disease, and not taking lipid-lowering medication, based on all the data I've shown here today, somewhere in the 100 to 140 milligrams per deciliter range for LDL. Now, if you are taking lipid-lowering medication, there is actually data that's different from what I presented here in terms of what's optimal for all-cause mortality risk. So if you're interested in uh, checking that out, just uh, leave a comment, and uh, I'll post that paper. All right, that's all I've got for now. Uh, you can find me lots of places online. Uh, have a great day.